Central Arizona Shelter Services, also known as CAS, is facing a $1.5 million shortfall amid various state funding cuts and increased expenses. What does it mean for CAS's mission of helping house the Valley's homeless population? We ask Lisa Glow. She is the CEO of CAS. Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you us. for having me. Uh, $1.5 million budget for shortfall. What happened? So let me tell you how we got here. So there has been unprecedented demand for services in the last several years. Um, as inflation has risen, the pandemic, we've had more homelessness. Um, people simply can't afford rent. And so we've been responding. We scaled up our beds to 600 plus other services at our main adult shelter, our family shelter, and all the programs have remained open. We've had a lot of COVID dollars that we've been able to rely on, and we've been telling our government partners we're going to need additional funding as those COVID dollars go down to maintain at this level. So we ended up with the shortfall. We've been communicating that. Um, and we're going to have continued ongoing needs because the COVID dollars have gone away. Fortunately, last week, Phoenix voted to help us start to close that shortfall. The shortfall happened in large part because the state of Arizona, for the first time in at least a decade or more, is not providing with general fund dollars to CAS for our two main shelters. And we've always been able to count on that. So mm -hmm. that's largely how we got here. What was the reasoning behind that? Well, we don't really know. We're going to be asking the Department of Housing to reconsider our application to the Homeless Shelter Fund. Um, from what I've been able to gather, they funded a lot of new projects. They, they had um, housing projects they funded. So we're hoping they'll reconsider. But there was also a lot of uh, applications. And so there's two ways to look at it. The shelter fund, we believe, was supposed to fund emergency shelter and didn't exclusively fund that. Um, also, there's a lot of demand right now. There's a demand for housing and homelessness and more requests than can be funded. But we have to address it. So the Housing Department turned down grant requests, uh, multi-million dollar grant, which had three of them, I, I imagine. Here. Correct. Uh, Department of Economic Security stopped funding last year. What was they, that all about? We don't really know. They didn't do a procurement and we did talk to them about that. So we're not really sure if the state's going to continue to fund homeless services in Maricopa County through that fund. They're funding in rural areas, but we want to get to the bottom of it because it's too critical. We have scaled up and we have to be able to rely on sustained government funding. That's the bottom line here. Well, you've scaled up and you added those beds, uh, I think, in 2022, correct? Yes. Was it a mistake to add those beds? <laughs> I ask myself that often and I've actually talked to some of the council people and I said that I feel responsible. We're scaling up at your request. We're going to need help. We don't have it right now and we did it anyway. So, yeah, I think... In, in reflecting on it, I won't make that mistake again. It's, it's a hard thing. But we have always, over the last 40 years, responded to need, and we've found a way to make it work. So I think that might be part of the reason we didn't get funded, because we've always made it work. But we can't continue to maintain without counting on state government in particular. Yeah, and, and cities as well. <clears throat> Phoenix City Council, where do they stand now on a financial boost? Well, they boosted us by 1.06 million out of the 1.5. And on an ongoing basis, they know to maintain at the level that we're at, and it's mostly serving Phoenix residents, we're going to need more continued support because that gets us through this fiscal year. What about other cities? What about a regional effort here? That's funny you ask because that happened at the council meeting, excuse me, that was brought up. And we are already very well diversified in our support from cities throughout the valley. But there needs to be an effort to do more, and I think that should be led by, really, by Maricopa Association of Governments. And we're using our voice to say how important emergency shelter is and the reasons why. Um, I've been in this job six and a half years, and it has not been funded at the levels that are really needed. So we'll continue to be a voice. Um, we, we even get funded by uh, Fountain Hills and Paradise Valley and places that have very little homelessness. So we're really doing our part. Um, it has to be a priority, though. Last year in Maricopa County, there were somewhere around 1,200 people who died in the streets. So the stories need to be told. Shelter saves lives. We're the front line. What are you hearing from MAG as far as that regional effort? MAG has done a lot of planning in that arena. I think they have to do another push to um, 
bring the cities together. We're asked, you know, what are you doing to bring communities together and get more funding? We can't do we, we can't do all things. We need government to step up and do that. We already have a tough enough job as the frontline providers that serve thousands of people, and we are a lean operation. You also have a 24-hour service. Is that in, first of all, has it been cut? Is there a threat it could be cut? There have been no cuts. We uh, gave ourselves a 60-day deadline to really bridge this gap and figure out what we're gonna do, and I met, we met with the board of directors in January. So. We've always been a 24-7 provider, but right. what that means is people would leave for a certain number of hours that would allow us to not have as much staffing, even though we're lean in our staffing already. So the board mandate was, look, anywhere we can make cuts to make sure we can sustain ourselves. Last question here. What happens if this funding doesn't come through? Because I'm already hearing, and you can tell us now, that the zone, it's not what it once was, uh, but it hasn't been. It, start, people are starting to come back to that zone area in downtown Phoenix, mm -hmm. uh, which was such a problem for so long and was supposed to have been handled by the courts and the city. And it sounds like people are trickling back. Right. Well, there's services that they can receive at the campus there, so there'll always be people, but there are no tents. And um, the last count that was done, there were 90 people, and at the height of the zone, it was over 1,000 people. Um, one of the good things Phoenix did is they opened a safe outdoor camping space that currently has about 50 people in it, and it can go as high as 300. So th those folks will be directed there as an option. I, I don't think we'll see the zone come back. I, I, I really don't. Um, Phoenix is on top of it, we're all on top of it, but we need to maintain at our bed level to continue to be a part of that, and we need the sustained funding to be a part of that too. Lisa Glow, Central Arizona Shelter Services, thank you for the conversation, thank you for the visit, we appreciate it. Thank you so much.